Hey guys, it's Laurel. Today is Saturday, February 11th. This is floss tube number nine. Welcome back or welcome to if you just found me. I have all kinds of nonsense to talk about today. I made some note cards. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll make it less organized. I don't know. I do have a goal for next time. I have been watching a lot of new, new to me floss tubers over the last two weeks and I have discovered that I really like watching the ones that have a nice pretty organized background. That's not really me. So I'm going to work on what you see behind me and hopefully you'll see something that looks a little more organized next time you see me. I also went back and watched a floss tube because I was convinced that I had not gotten a chart that I'd ordered and I said it, it didn't come. It says that it came but it didn't come and I know that it didn't because I would have showed it in my last video. So I went back and watched my last video and I did get it. But in watching it I realized I'm constantly like touching my face in my videos so just something else to be self-conscious about I guess. So we're just going to jump in and kind of see where today goes. If you have not been with me before this is a floss tube video. I have it listed as a floss tube, but I do show quilting at the end of the video and I try to keep those separate if that's not something that you're interested in. So I do want to start, like I said, I made some notes. I have been watching, I have my like set floss tubers that I watch every single floss tube they put out and I know what day they come out and about what time they come out and I sit and I wait and um, I love them. I can watch them over and over and over, but I have some new to me that I have been watching. I have some that I had watched previously, but for whatever reason had not subscribed, so I had missed some of their videos. So I just wanted to throw a few of those out. I know I had watched a lady earlier in the week and she starts all her videos with a list of floss tubers and I thought that was a really good idea. So I would like to, as I discover someone that's new to me, go ahead and list them when I start my video. I'm sure that you have all seen all of these. If you're watching me, I know you probably watch these, but I do just want to throw them out there and I will put all of those in the description box below. I will list their floss tube videos. Um, Trixie Tricycle, I, I'm sure I'm the last one on the bus for there, but I've heard several people mention her and I went back and watched her two most recent videos and rewound them and watch some more and rewound them and watch some more. I just love to listen to her talk. She's very calm. She's very confident when she shows all her pieces. I love everything that she has shown. I love that in her, I don't know if it's the last video or the video before that, she said, I, I have 40, it's like 47 or 48 whips or whatever. And you know, hope you brought a snack or whatever. And I was like, oh, I love it. I just love it when they show that many things. I, I try to keep my whips to around 25 just because I do have quilting on top of the cross stitch so we won't count the quilting whips that are going on but I do like to keep cross stitch around 25. That's not set in stone. I, it's just kind of a guideline for me. Most of my list and goals are just guidelines for me so it's not anything that I stand firm on. I reserve the right to switch at any time. But anyway, Trixie Tricycle, love her, love her, love her. She will be one that will go on my list to watch every time she posts something. Stitching Fay, I watched her. There was like four of the other people that I watched just in the last two weeks that had mentioned her. And I was like, well, I have to go over and watch her. So if you have not watched her and you love Mirabilia, you need to go watch her. She has other pieces, obviously. She has a ton of samplers her taste is wonderful like I love what she does and she I, I don't know because I, I she's not one that I have seen from the, the start so I don't know but it, she seems to be a very fast stitcher for everything that she's got done um, the next one is Fanciful Flamingo I love her if she lived close to me we would be best friends because her sense of humor is right there with mine I love 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 the little jokes that she puts in to her videos about her husband and her kids and how lucky they are to have her and it just cracks me up it just cracks me up she um i think she posts once a week i have seen her before but she's one of the ones i don't know why i didn't subscribe which i did switch my 
subscriptions over when I started this channel to be under this name and not my personal name. So I think maybe I just missed her when I added everybody back in. But I love her. If for whatever reason you haven't watched her, you should go watch her. She's fantastic. Um, Crossed by Floss. I actually found her because she had mentioned me in a video and I, I thank her so much for that. She listed a ton of floss tubers and she called us the under under 1000 sub club and she was discussing how there's a lot of floss tubers out there that do not have you know some people go on they post two videos and they have 3,000 followers and 800 views on every video that they watch and she had listed specifically in this video there was I don't remember how many, but she lists them all in her description box below. And I've gone in and watched about half of them. And there are really, really good floss tubes. And again, she had made mention, you know, she doesn't know something about algorithms or whatever. I don't know how it comes up that you see what you see. But, but definitely go back and watch her video. Her husband is a truck driver, which I can relate to. My husband was a truck driver for many years. He was not over the road which I think is what her husband is but some of the stories that she was telling about when she went on a run with him I I can relate to just hearing my husband tell stories and just in his work life so I, I really like her she's very personable um, and she's fantastic um, the New Hampshire Stitcher I'm sure everybody has watched her she I love her because she is very she doesn't know how great she is she is very just she comes on and I just did this and this and then and then I just whip this up and she pulls up this beautiful piece and she's finishing her stuff and all her videos are great. She's very articulate, which is the opposite of me, so I can really appreciate the effort that goes into her videos. She does insert pictures and everything and I, I originally I messed with some of the editing and I would do part of the video and then stop it and then do part and insert stuff in between it. It just was eating up a lot of time. So I've kind of changed how I do my videos to just try to do just one shot and just post it and be done and not stress about all the little extra stuff. But she is really good. And again, she's another one that got me on the background because she films in front of this really pretty window and it has this pretty scenery behind it. And I'm just going to babble a little bit. But if you, for again, for whatever reason, have not watched her New Hampshire Stitcher. Uh, Lala D stitches. She is another. I don't stitch Mirabilia's. I I have I actually dug out a couple old lavender and lace that I'm going to show you that I bought years and years and years ago. Her passion for Mirabilia's is contagious. It makes you want to go stitch something. And I I actually we went to our my local LNS this morning. My husband took me over and they have a Mirabilia in there that. I have had it in my hand four times and put back. And today was another day. I had it in my hand, but I put it back. Because it's really neat. It's beautiful. It's intricate. I love it. But I don't know what I would do with it when I finished it. So I don't know. I may wind up doing it. Somebody on Instagram had posted a finish. And it's like the, the card, the queen, the card that has the two heads. It's just so neat. I don't know. Right, so we'll see. You might see it in a haul session in the next couple videos I don't know but uh, again if you again for whatever reason because she is one of those she posted like one video and she had like 1500 subscribers and I was like oh let me see her and she is just genuine and funny and she's just happy she's just a happy person I get up on Saturday mornings and I do like my housework and stuff and then I kind of settle in and I sit down um, and pull up floss tube and kind of watch them and she's just really like if you're just really like Oh, I just need to get my day started and I need to, you know, have a little motivation. She's great to watch. Just her, her personality is great. Really like her. And then the last one that I watched just happened to come up the other day as a suggestion on YouTube. It is Made on the Cape. She only has two videos and they're very short videos. But I'm amazed at how much stuff she has fit into those two short videos. So... It won't take you long to go in. You can go and watch both videos. I don't know that she has a third one posted yet. I didn't look before this, but Made on the Cape. Um, and that's her Instagram name also. And you can go on. And she also has a lot of Mirabilia's. And she has um, a lot of really intricate pieces. 
And I did watch, just I was scrolling through her Instagram, and she seems to be speedy too. So maybe if I just surround myself with speedy people, I will stitch faster. I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. Um, and then this isn't really, I mean, everybody knows who Kathy Haberman is, hands-on design. I just wanted to point out, and I know I had seen this, and then I think Fat Quarter Shop had meant, maybe Fat Quarter Shop, somebody that I watched had mentioned, if you go back on her, I think it's on her blog, every year for her and her husband's anniversary, she does a freebie, like, love theme chart, and she had put them all together in one area on her blog, and I have several of them that I've printed off over the last couple years, but if you just go in, I think it's listed maybe as anniversary freebies, or if you just look up hands-on design freebies, you should be able to find a link to it but they're all really cute you know it's not like throwaway freebies like oh let me just throw something out for my people I mean it's really in-depth and thoughtful things and like I said she does it around her anniversary for her husband I just like that I think that's really neat okay so I want to first talk about my nerd note while I just have it on my brain instead of trying to insert it in the middle of everything so we, I have mentioned in the past that every year we do a road trip with my brother-in-law and his family. And recently, my husband and I, we had gone to a, a quilt shop that was in another city. And they had this book. And I had seen this a couple times, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it. And in this one, he was talking to the, the my husband was talking to the shop owner. And I was just kind of walking around browsing. I'd already picked up what I was going to buy. And then, so I picked this up and started looking through it. This is a great book if you are someone that travels. You can go in by state and pull up, um, by city, pull up, look up the state. It will list the city, it will list the shops, and then it has a little section where it will tell you they have quilting, they have embroidery, they have yarn, they have cross stitch. It gives you like a little key as to what they have. So it it's a good little guide if you are someone that travels because when we do our road trips, we're very much about, oh, let's look up this city and see what they're known for and see what they have and, and see what the local attractions and stuff are. Now, I'm a little bit mad at myself because I, I've mentioned this multiple times my daughter has joined the Air Force. We went to San Antonio for graduation in November. I did not take this book. We were in Texas. Texas is a big state. I get it. There are so many shops that I could have went to, but I didn't take this book with me because obviously my mind was about my young and I wasn't concerned with that, but had I taken this book, I would have found so many places that would have been beneficial for me to go. I watched The Calculated Stitcher. She's one of the floss tubes that I watch everything she puts out. She's a teacher, and she just has that good teacher calming voice, and I like that. And she is always referencing the Tin Snips wife. And I'm like, oh, that just sounds like the coolest shop ever. Went to Texas. Didn't take my book. That's all I'm going to say. So if you, and I don't remember, this was, yeah, $10. $10. And I don't know how often they put it out. This is the 2022. I don't know that they do it every year. I would assume maybe every few years. I don't know. But if you have the opportunity and you are a traveler and you're, you know, spend half your trip Googling places to look, this is a good one to have, so you can kind of plan ahead a little bit. So I will definitely be using that. And I did, there was a quilt shop that we went to when we were in Texas. And I did go in here and mark it in my book and the day that we visited. Just so kind of have a reference. If for whatever reason we ever are back there, I could look up and go, oh yeah, that's the one that we went to before. So, neat little book to have. All right. Um... Next, I want to let me let me show you my fully finished object. I, I haven't finished 
any stitching pieces, but I did fully finish a piece. I am, I do have a list that I had talked about a few videos back of things that I want to get fully finished or epipode. This one was actually not on my list, but when I took my January piece to Hobby Lobby, I went in, I was just going to order the frames and not have them do the frame and I was going to do the frame in myself. And I did that and I showed you in the last video um, the piece that I had. I also, when I took that one, I wasn't sure because I was like, let me just take a second piece in case they don't have a frame that I like for this piece, just so I have something that I have ordered a frame for. So, I, sorry, I took a Little Deeds Sampler yeah, by the Scarlet House. Now, I've told you before, my two go-tos, I love Plum Street, I love the Scarlet House. So I was so excited when I finished this one, it has just hung and it's just hurt my feelings that I did not have this in a frame anywhere. So I was very excited. It was very good pricing at Hobby Lobby. All I ordered was the frame and the glass. These are in easels, so I didn't have to get like the hanging hardware. I didn't have to. All I did for the back was cut another piece of mat board and put back in there. I mean, I can get some of that paper and put on the back if I want to eventually. You know, and if I hang it on the wall, I will, because I don't want this to scrape up, and I'll put the little stopper things, whatever they're called, on the back. But anyway, this is my piece. A little glare, sorry. And this one, I was a little bit nervous about doing this one just because of the straight lines. And you can see, I think the margin's a little off right here, but I can still go in and wiggle it around. It's laced. It's not pinned. So it's very easy just to pop it out. I had set it on the piano and I was sitting on the couch and this front part was like front. Oh my goodness. This top part was kind of dipped in. So I just, next day I got up, popped it out of the frame real fast and just shimmied it down a little bit. And it, you know, gave, cause like I said, it's laced. It's not stuck to any kind of sticky board. So I can move it and the frame is really, I don't know if you can pick up the detail or not, but the frame is really nice. This is supposed to be anti-glare glass. And you can see there is some glare from stuff, but just where it sits in the living room, like it doesn't pick up any kind of glare or anything. So I'm very excited to have that one. So that was one that was not... A planned FFO but it worked out very nicely so I do have a smaller piece this year this year words just do not happen for me when I'm filming I don't know but I do have a smaller piece for February that is my FFO plan and I think it will be a frame too so I'm trying to decide if I want to do Hobby Lobby again or if I want to go online because it is smaller um, and I think it'll be easy to match. So we'll see how that one turns out. And then I did also, sorry, I just don't have a good setup right now, but next video, great strides. Um, I also, now I did show this piece last time. This was the last one and same thing. I'd ordered this room from Hobby Lobby, framed it, laced it myself, did the, the board on the back. But I was out of easels because I've used all the easels for the pieces that I've been getting finished. And I wanted to set it up on the piano. I have a bunch of finished pieces up there. They sit real nice. And I was like, let me just see. So I had a couple like cheap easels, but it wasn't sitting in it right. Like the angle was off. So I went to Michael's the other day and I found this frame. This was like 11 or $12. And I just wanted to show it because... I told you that I would eat my words when I said stuff on floss tube. I had said, I'm not into the bird thing. There's birds in this. And when I went, I saw this, for this easel and I was like, that's the cutest little thing ever. $12. The easel has a little bird on it. Is that not adorable? So when I put my piece on it and set it on the piano, look at that. It just made me happy. I just think that's the most darling thing ever. So, there you go. Michael's $12. And that was just 
within the last two weeks I went over there. Okay, so before I show you the whips that I've been working on, I had last video or the video before I'd asked everybody to, maybe it's last, one, I don't know, we were talk. I was talking about Mirabilia and Nor Corbett and, you know, did you, do you stitch those? Do you have some pieces? What are your favorites? Let me know. And people were commenting and I was like, you know, years ago, I mean, like, I, I'm 50 this year and, or I was, I turned 50 last year. When I first started, I don't want to say when I first started cross stitching, when I moved out of my house into my apartment, I got a little bit back into cross stitching. I had gone to my LNS. I found these patterns. They're lavender and lace. Fell in love with them. Bought these three, came home. I was going to whip these up like nobody's business. I was like 19 when I moved out. I'm 50. Have not put the first stitch, have not bought the first floss have not bought the first piece of fabric to do these. But as I was looking for these to pull them out, I ran across a lot, I don't want to say a lot, five or six pieces that I had started during that time frame. I am so glad I didn't do these back then because, ooh, the stitching was bad. I only did 14 count Ada, which it's, I still do 14 count Ada. I'm not saying, but these would not have been what I would appreciate right now had I done them that long ago on the fabric that I was stitching on. Because I, in the pictures, and you'll see it's the colored fabric, but everything I did before was 14 count, like that oatmeal Ada, which is great for some things, but I don't think it would have been good for these. So I will show you these three. And what's funny is the, the LNS that I bought these at, 30 years ago, it is my LNS today, which she is mostly like yarn and needlepoint, but she has a great variety of over dyed floss, silk, she carries MPI and water lilies, which I haven't tried, but I do want to try those at some point. Um, but she's a great source for floss for me. She will order any chart that you want. She carries a small selection but still a good selection of hands across the sea she has samplers she has like christmas pieces so she has plenty in there i never go in and not buy a chart ever so but these are the three pieces this one is actually open so i'm just going to show you the picture this is lavender and lace and it is angel of spring Sorry, I was like, why does she look so funny? She was sideways. So my plan was, back in the day, this is Angel of Spring. I also bought Angel of Summer. So you see they're facing each other. And they're beautiful. Oh, they're so pretty. And then I bought Heavenly Gifts. So I was going to do this one, put it in the middle. The other two hang on the, the outer side. So as a beginner stitcher, I was going to stitch all three of these. Just in, no problem at all have them hanging up in my apartment. I've moved like four times since then. And, side note, they were $6. $6. Oh. I could go in and find some charts for six dollars right now. Woo. Happy, happy girl. But anyway, so I just thought that would be kind of fun. And I do, I would still like to do these. There is another one, and I thought that I had it. I think that I thought I had it in place of this one. But it's an angel, and the her dress at the bottom is like dark colors. And it had a lot of the beading and stuff down in the bottom. And it almost looked... Indian or aztec -y or I can't remember exactly. I just remember thinking it was really pretty and I thought that that was one of the three that I owned, but it's not. So I don't know if that's still in print. I may look around and see if I can find it on a secondary market or something, but you know, obviously I, ha I have plenty to do right here. So I may look and I looked it up. They're not giant. Like if I got like a, a 32 count or 16 count, 
it, they wouldn't be big. I mean, I can't do 36 right now. I did order a piece of 36 just to try because I'm feeling brave, but we'll see when that comes in. All right, so now I'm going to show you what I've been working on. So I always feel like I've been so, so busy, and then I, I get here and I'm like, I, I don't have all my stuff to show. So I don't know. You may get sick of looking at these same pieces because I feel like I've shown them in every video. I don't know, but I'll just keep you up to date on my progress on them. So the first one is Emily Ann Foster, and it is a Hands Across the Sea sampler. And this is kind of by default turned into my Sunday stitch. Yeah, I was working on it on Wednesday nights also before church, but I, I change what I do on Wednesdays, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit. But this is... I'm stitching it on a piece of 28, yeah, 28 count Lugana, and it's just easy for me to see, so it's a good travel stitch, so it's kind of turned into my, you know, back and forth to church, or if we, you know, if me and my husband go somewhere and he's driving, it's during the day, I'll take it, because I can work on it in the car, and it is right now what I'm working on for my current red sampler, and I, I do have, I'll show you, I have plans for my next red sampler when I finish this one and it's going pretty fast I just haven't worked on it a like a ton ton I get good progress when I work on it so I am now like I just have to finish that decorative row and then all that will be left is her name and the little fancy scrolls at the bottom which I'm very excited to get to and I was this is um, mushroom Lugana and I am using schoolhouse red had to go get some more of that today because I was almost out okay and then the next day I'm working on Chantel with 141 design company is doing a stitch along it's hashtag, hashtag mad for plaid, S-A-L. She has started this, and she had suggested starting spring, but you can do any of them. I originally had gotten this, and I think I talked, I don't know if I talked about it last video or not, but Kathy had given this one out, released this as like a freebie a while back. I had bought some black 16 count Ada to do it on, bought all the flosses, never did it, but... I have now um, with Chantel starting to stitch along and it's just one row per week and we just this is the end of the second week I am doing the the spring and I'm stitching it on thirty two count charcoal it's a Lugana charcoal maybe. And I, ha I am stitching it one over two. I had started it two over two. Right here. But I just didn't think it, it did, didn't lay pretty. So I switched over to that. So the next row will be spring. And this is a big piece, so I can do. I can do all of them on here and I do have the little piece to finish it she's going to do it like a tutorial which if you want to finish your own stuff like on the boards and stuff and you haven't watched her tutorials you should go watch her because I mean that's what she does I mean and she's you know done it for a long time but she's very good at explaining how she gets the effect that she does and make you you know, she's very good at making you feel like you can accomplish it. She doesn't do some fancy thing that she's like, oh, well, after you've practiced for 25 years, you can do that. It's all very simple stuff that you can start out doing. The next piece I've been working on is also Hansel and Design. It is Knee High. I started this one during my first mania. Stitched a little bit and never picked it back up. And this was on my... This is my focus whip for this month, 
it was drawn. I'm stitching this on a piece of the dogs are outside and I could hear them on the deck just a wrestling. Um, this is on a piece of 28 count Lucan Monaco that I copy tea dyed. I had posted a picture on Instagram where I was when I started. I had only done a little bit of this medallion sun piece up here and maybe, I don't know, a little bit of the cornstalk. And I haven't really worked on this a lot. I didn't really get into my like February plans till week and a half into February. No. Week into February. So I'm not really going really good. But I do like it. I, I'm doing my own like random conversion just as I get to a color. I pick something out of my stash, DMC. And I really like how the stitches look on Monaco. I like it. It's heavier, but I, I don't know. I just like it. Sometimes it, it's nice to have that because it's not so flimsy that you can't like hold on to it and work good. I don't know. I just, I, I really enjoy it. I like it a lot. And then this is my, again, by default, it has turned into my Saturday morning stitch because I like to get up first thing Saturday morning and just in the quiet, put a little bit of stitching in. And then I've started kind of in the evenings on Saturday working on it because I try to work on my focus whip through the week. I have the Mav for Plaid is what has turned into my like Wednesday small project. I had wanted to incorporate smalls and I did a little flag pillow to start with. And then she had started this stitch along. So I'll just do that as my small piece. Um, and then this Saturday and Sunday is just whatever I want to stitch, which is just right now turned into my red sampler and this piece. But this is Wildflowers by Kathy Barrett. And I'm having a really hard time not starting her winter moth. So that will be coming. But this one I just really, really like. And I think I, part of the reason I like it so much is that you can stitch a little bit, do like an outline, and then save that for later, you know, while we're watching TV. I can just do mindless filling. And I don't, I do not, have not had the opportunity to go to any stitch retreat, retreats. <coughs> Excuse me. But this would be a great one to do like the outline and then just take it to a retreat and do the filling. Kind of like cross stitching, coloring for cross stitchers. And it is charted for MPIs, I think. And it uses, I'm pretty sure it's a fox and rabbit piece, but I am using a piece of 32 count Murky Lugana and the DMC, because she does list the DMC in there. And when you look at the, the picture, like when I'm stitching it, it's very green when I'm stitching. The picture reads very white. But I, I think it's just a difference in the gloss conversion. And then you see the fabric that they use is quite a bit darker in most spots than what I'm using. But I just, I love it. I think it's really pretty. I really like how it's turning out. So, again, that's Wildflowers by Kathy Barrick. And then the last thing I've been working on is Plum Street Samplers. If you watch me, you know, I just love her. I'm sorry if this is looking fuzzy. It looks a little fuzzy to me. But but this is, I'm stitching this on a piece of 20 count. Ada um, Vintage Country Mocha. This is one that I just, I love and I love all her big pieces that I've talked, or this size piece that she does. This one I have decided to leave at work and I only stitch on during my lunch hour. I normally, 99% of the time, I take my lunch to work. I go upstairs in the office and I eat my lunch and then that leaves me, you know, anywhere from, you know, 30 minutes, 20, 30, 40 minutes to stitch. 
So I have been doing that and it, it, I am stitching it one over one. And I'm really, I have never before this year, before this year, before this past six months maybe, stitched with just one thread. I really like it. So there will be more of that coming. But, and this is just to kind of show you that you don't have to sit down and have big hunks of time to do something. That if you just stick with something, eventually you will get a little bit done. And I, I say that I hope you're not expecting like a grand amount to be done, but this is, This is where I am. So I done, I just have like one more word to do and the word and we'll be done. I had just in the last probably two days at lunch, I have done this viney piece and this little bit at the bottom. This water was probably a good three or four days worth of lunchtime stitching. These patches of grass each patch of grass took me about three lunch, I say lunch hours, but, um, but you know, over time it's, it's going to add up and it will eventually be done. And I'm very excited to be to this big, like sunny star over here. So isn't that just, oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. Paula does so, so good. And I am, I have looked over this entire chart. And the only over one that I see is in some of the flag conversions, if you're using your um, initials for the corresponding flags on the sailboat. And my initials, I'm pretty sure, did not have any one over one, or over one. But again, that's with on little. So I'll take this one back to work. And again, I won't show this every video because... It's not going to be that much progress in a two-week span, so. But I'm very happy with that one. And and I understand now, like, the concept. I've tried to do it, you know, the one red thread before bed that, that people have done. I, I did that for a little bit with my pandemic sampler. Um, but but it does, like, I see where it adds up. And obviously, if, if you're, you know, a fast stitcher, it's going to... Um, you know, it's going to speed things up anyway, but this I like for this piece particular because it is just that little span of time. And the way this chart is, if I'm bored with the flowers, I can go down and work on the water. If I'm bored with the water, I can go up and work on the grass, that type thing. So I just like that. So, all right. So I do want to talk about plans for my cross stitch before I go on to haul. I'm not sure these notes are really going to help me that much. I think they're just going to cause me more anxiety and confusion. But anyway, I do want to talk about plans. So I am going to continue working on my focus piece, knee high. Saturdays and Sundays will probably still see attention on wildflowers and my hands across the sea red sampler. When I am done with this red sampler, my next one is going to be one that I'll lay somewhere. Sorry. My next one is going to be this that I had shown a couple videos ago. This will be my next one. And my thought is I had a piece of Ash Lugana and it's just, it was just too, too light. There wasn't anything that I wanted to stitch on it. And a while back, I mean like a good while back, I had coffee tea dyed a piece of gray Lugana. It turned out the most beautiful, I don't, I don't even know how to describe the color, but just the prettiest color. And I stitched a plum streak piece on it that my husband has in his office. And it is one of the fav my favorite things. It is so, so pretty. So I decided I would coffee tea dye this and it would come out that beautiful color. It didn't really come out that beautiful color. It just came out as a a beigey brown. It has a little bit of modeling to it. It's kind of hard to see because of the the light. It does have a little bit, and I thought about antiquing it. 
and like I got the anti thin spray out like three times and I'm like you know I think I'm just I'm okay with it I got some uh, gentle arch cranberry when I went to the um, my LNS today so I think I'm just gonna use that the cranberry is really a little bit darker than what it's showing up but I think that'll be pretty I would originally thought I might start this for Valentine's Day but I want to just have one red sample going at a time so I'm gonna hold off on starting anything on Valentine's Day and just wait till that other one is finished um, other plans possibly and this is only because when I went to the shop this morning in there they normally have a lot of the like the newer releases up at the register and a bin and I was sorting through this chart was in there now I already own the chart I got it as soon as it came out but it, it, it only takes a few colors so I went ahead and got the colors and that same piece of fabric that I had there was a smaller piece also so I went ahead and dipped it in when I was dying that one so I think I'm going to maybe start that one coming up on that fabric also I think that will look really 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 pretty um, because you can't have too many plum streaks started I watched Sweetwater Stitcher yesterday or day before maybe and she was showing her whips she was like and another plum streak and another plum streak and another and I was like there's nothing wrong with that there's not at all a problem with stitching that much plum streak none at all zero all right so that's what I, I plan on doing continuing on with my map for plaid stitching my knee high my red sampler my live on little during lunch wildflower on Saturday over and over and over and over and over repetition will eventually get me somewhere unless a squirrel happens which probably will because market is coming up there are sneak peeks coming out and even though you can't get them yet a lot of them spark memories of other pieces that you're like oh yeah I have that or I bought this during last market and maybe I should get that out and work on it and right now I'm really 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 wanting to work on a Quaker sampler don't know which one it will be because I have several that I haven't started I have a couple that I have going so you may see that in the next video you may not just kind of depending on what direction I go with that all right so oh and one more thing one more thing Oops, had a note sorry I'm over there is a sow coming up and I'm pretty sure but I'm pretty sure but not 100% I think it's the fanciful flamingo and sweetwater stitcher maybe or somebody in their little group of people that is doing it it is the best bunny sow I think and I looked it up I only saw like one picture posted so far so I don't think it's started yet I think it's more of like a Easter time start but I just caught a little glimpse of it on Instagram and I was like I have some bunny things I have two bunny things and I want to stitch both of them so when I was looking for those two bunny things to show you I have more than two bunny things so I'm going to show you contenders for that if I actually get the chance to participate in the sale because obviously I'm I got a lot going on so my original two thoughts were um, patience 1898 because alphabet words love it look at the little bunny I'm sorry that's super glary um, and this is by so it's an original design by hands to work revisited but again patience I think that's super cute and then um, the other one is love is the key this is one that was released I think last year during market and she, when she released it yeah it was just like the computer 
generate a like graphic version of it but now someone has stitched it I don't know if she if Teresa stitched it or somebody else stitched it as her like model but oh it's pretty it's pretty and somebody is stitching it right now I'm sorry I don't know if it's a I feel like I saw somebody doing it on floss too and it may be I watched a Kia B was showing her like update from her New Year's Eve 12 by 12 and I think she did all like rabbit themed and then this bunny sale came up and I was like oh that's got rabbit in my brain but as I was looking for those two um, I also have I, I really have I have acquired quite a few artful offerings charts even though I haven't finished any of them I really like the charts um, but look this is really Christmas but look bunny 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 this is so cute and just all the alphabet back there behind it I like it but bunny 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 so that'll qualify and then I forgot and I ordered this one completely forgot but that kind of gets both you could start this on Valentine's Day and continue it through Easter bunny bunny okay all right so now I am going to show you haul I know I keep saying I'm gonna quit buying stuff but I have no willpower so there is a bit of haul and I'm gonna jump out of frame just one more time and I'm so sorry but this is what I went the whole purpose of going to the LNS this morning was to get this and this is just my um, restock of my personal stash so when I finish a, a skein of floss I take this little ticket off of them and I have a little bowl on my sewing table and I put them in there and then the next time I'm going to my LNS I grab them out of that bowl and I go and I just replenish my supply that way I have some stash that doesn't may not necessarily keep building but it doesn't deplenish any so if if I ever have like at this point schoolhouse red so once I, I purchase it once if I keep this process up I will always have it in my stash so that if I need it to start a project I'll have it so I went just to buy that wound up buying all that other floss for the Plum Street piece and this chart love and joy and I blame all the floss tubers out in floss tube land for me buying this because everybody keeps showing it like everybody everybody is showing this piece and I'm like every time somebody shows it, I'm oh it's so cute and it's not very big I'm like oh I, I should do that I should do that and then there it was so came home with me and then I'm just gonna talk about this for like two seconds because I know not everybody got the opportunity to buy these and I know that it was kind of a situation I don't know the whole story I just caught little pieces of it just happened to be on Instagram one day saw that um, these were um, available that there was permission granted and that these were able to be um, sold again I promptly went on and bought my version printed them this is the two birds of the feather Sally Spencer and happy hearts sampler and then like a week later it was announced that there was actually just some confusion the person that gave permission was not the person that gave permission I did not get to watch the whole video because they were I was trying to watch it live and it was my phone was glitching and it just wasn't working but from what I understand the person that gave permission is not the person that actually had the permission to give so 1884 stitchery did the right thing just stopped everything and you know apologize I will not be able to sell these any longer but I, I am glad that I was able to get them I do have one unicorn chart out there in the world right now and I hope that everything that I've heard is correct and that they really are going to re-release Birds of a Feather by Blackbird I don't know this was my other one that I wanted Happy Hearts so I was able to get that one hopefully I will be able to get the other one 
I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then I bought, I should have taken these out. I'm sorry I didn't, but la di da Live, Laugh, Love. And this actually I bought because Cross by Floss showed this in her video. And there I was. I mean, I paused the video and went and put it in my cart. Is what I did. And this one had been on my wish list with one, two, three stitch. And I figured since I was buying the one, I'll just buy the other. I've seen a couple people do this, and for a million dollars right now, I could tell you who they were. Maybe, possibly, Saltbox Stitcher. I'm not sure. But I just love it because this is just so, like, I don't know, dainty and beautiful, this little flower. And then here's this checkerboard house right in the middle. And I don't think it's very big. Maybe. I didn't pull it out and look, but I, I don't think it's big. And then I wanted this for the longest time, and I've had it in my cart a couple times, and I keep taking it back out. Only because it's big. It is so big. Again, Carol Saltbox Stitcher has talked about this. In her last whip parade, she mentioned it, but I don't think she ever showed it. I think she just kind of said something about it. So I don't know if she has started it or if she just owns it. But I love this. It's The Flood by Plum Street Samplers. If you go online and you pull up a picture of this and blow up this rain, oh, it's just so cool. Now, I did think about maybe condensing it. You know, maybe I could, I don't know. Maybe I could not do, maybe not do the words at the top and bottom. There's a little bit of words up there. And maybe somehow condense some of this stuff in here. But, oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Beautiful. When my son was a baby, his nursery was Noah's Ark. And had I been in cross-stitch for you know, a newborn baby, what am I saying? I was about to say, had I been in cross-stitch world at that point, I would have definitely done that for his nursery. It, you couldn't do that with a newborn baby. Come on. Okay, so anyway, that is a lot of babbling about my cross-stitch world right now. So that ran a little long, and I didn't really mean for it to be so long. So I'll go kind of quick through the, the quilting. But if you're not interested in the quilting, this is all I have as far as cross stitch. I do hope you stay for the quilting portion. You may see something, as I said before, that triggers an interest that you may have. Um, it's a good calming hobby I've quilted for many years. Sometimes I get good results, sometimes I get bad results, but it all makes me happy because it, it's fabric and it's doing something with your hands and I just love that. So I think that a lot of crafters have you know two or more hobbies that they have and cross stitch and quilting are those two for me so I'm going to like I said real quick go through the quilting because this is kind of a long video so far and I didn't mean for it to be quite so long so I will real quick go through I'm going to start with haul I had shown some stuff in the last video that I bought when we went to a um, needle art show this I had also bought, but I'd forgotten about. I think I may have already owned this pattern. I'm not sure. But when I went, they had this done in red, white, and blues. And it was stunning. So I didn't want to take a chance. It was $10, so I just bought it. If, you know, it winds up that I have it, I'll give it to a quilting buddy. But I did get that one. I got just today my club of mini charm packs. I'm very excited about this. This is a French general that I will not say the name of because I will mess it up. This has blues, some purples. This I haven't pulled out, so I'm not really sure what else in there, but I'm very excited about that. And I want to get back doing some stuff with those, you know, plans, plans, plans. Um, I did get the latest issue of American Patchwork and Quilting, which I just want to show you this one piece because oh, it's beautiful. Kim Deal has my number right now in quilting world. Like, I mean, everything she does, I love. 
and I showed you last time the spool blocks. I should get another set of those here in the next week or so. So hopefully I'll have some more of those to show you next time, but I just want you to look at this. It's so pretty. So that is definitely one on my list. Definitely, definitely. All right, so for my quilting focus piece, what got drawn was my anthology quilt. I've done zero on it, zero, zero. Again, I didn't get started on my focus pieces till later in the month. I just didn't get a, I don't know if I just didn't get a good start or I just didn't finish with January's in time. I don't know. So I am going to show you the pieces, the blocks in this quilt that I've done previously, but none of those were done this month. This is the book. It's four by five inch quilt blocks. It has several different layouts in here, but this is a portion of the one that I'm going to do. And if you see, there's little setting pieces that have little half square triangles. And I am doing this all in batiks just because at the time that I started this, I was very, very into batiks, which I love batiks still. They're very beautiful and very, you know, timeless. I mean, you do a blue and green batik quilt today and 10 years from now, you can do one that looks similar to it in batiks because batiks are just batiks. But anyway, so I'm just going to run through these blocks real fast. I have about... I don't know, 20 something done. It takes 182 to finish it. So hopefully I'll have some new ones to show you next time, but I don't know, we'll just see. It's a little harder to get quilting time than cross stitch time because I can't really take my sewing machine, sewing machine out in front of the TV, but we'll see. So, and these aren't like, I don't have all my little fuzzy threads cut off, but this is my favorite right here. I like that. I have a little quilt, a little quilt, like a, a baby size quilt that I did with this quilt block. It's so pretty. Very colorful. So as you can see, all the blocks, you know, are very different. There's no two alike. There is a lady on Instagram that if I can remember to look it up, I will try to link her or list her Instagram below. She recently finished this and she did like more Civil War type prints, which is probably what I would do now if I was starting, but I'm not starting over. Um, but oh, it is beautiful. I mean, it is just stunning. This one, I did a terrible job. Those are supposed to be like those squares should be a different color. There's not enough contrast there, but again, I'm not redoing it. 182 blocks. Once they're done, they're done. And these are fun. It's kind of neat to do, you know, if you just want to kind of get a, if you have a quilting day planned and you just need a little jump start. And these, some are paper pieced and some are regular pieced. But it's a good little start if you just want to knock one of these out before you start in on your main piece. So we'll see. One day it will be a beautiful quilt. Beautiful, beautiful. And then the uh, I have two more things to show that I've worked on. So I did two more um, blocks in my socialites. I am doing the six inch blocks. So I did this one last night. This should have been super easy and just gave me all kinds of a fit. And I did this one. I did this one today. It's cute. And I am, I am still behind. They have released 15 blocks and I've done nine. So I have six to do to catch up. So we'll see if I get in a good little rhythm, I can get those knocked out. And then the last thing I have is I had talked about this. It's probably been I don't remember when it was that they said to do this. Um, January 14th through 16th. So I'm like a month late, but it's fine. 
Um, Moda did a, released a Moda Love Charm quilt. It's a free pattern. And it was part of a Moda Charm Pack Challenge weekend, is to take a charm pack and make this quilt. I was very excited because I have a lot of charm packs. It was going to be a quick quilt top to do. And I really thought about doing one with my mini charms because I saw somebody do that and never got to the mini charm but I did finally do the charm quilt and it was like literally it was like you could do it in two days I think it took me like three evenings because I just worked on it a little bit one evening um, but it went together super fast super easy I do not remember what the fabric line is I pulled the wrapping off of it and set it to the side so that I could tell you I don't know what it is but that's okay because, I mean, this is older. I mean, I've had this um, for a long time, so it wouldn't be available right now anyway. But this is the piece. I'm going to try to, I can't get it all in the frame, but. And I did add a two inch border all the way around. I mean, it's cut two and a half inches, but it'll kind of finish at two inches. I did do that just to kind of give it a little space around it. I will probably just quilt this myself. It's not really like the the colors of my house or anything, so I'm going to use it as a, a piece to practice some of my own quilting. I'm going to use a technique that Krista Quilts uses, and it's basically similar to straight line quilting, but you're you're kind of doing it at a wave so it doesn't have to be precise and it just flows really nice i've seen her do that on a couple of quilts so i'm going to try to do that with this one um, plans for quilting i'm almost scared to say because i haven't really come through with my plans on quilting in a single video that i've done i've still not started my murder mystery quilt the second block has come out which it's kind of funny when I do this this is the one that I'm sewing with a group of friends the one year I didn't start till like April because I just could not get motivated but I, I sent my pictures of my background fabric to one of my friends that we're doing it with and she was like I had two choices I was like I'm not really in love with either one of them I don't know and she was like I picked this one out of those two so I take that as a, I'm going to, I'm going to do that one she said this one will be good, so I'm going to do it. So um, so Murder Mystery still has not been started. Barn Star Sampler has still not been started. I want very much to get both those started. I want to work on my red, white, blue quilt that I've shown you three times in the same stage, so I'm not about to show that to you today. Um, I do want to work a little bit on anthology. All that is contingent on how much time I get in my sewing room. Because again, I still have some organization that I want to do in here. I need to start on my niece's quilt. I have lots of things in the work and lots of things planned. So there will not be any boredom in my world. But I like it that way. I always like to have something going, something working. My hands are very, very busy. So I will hope to have some more progress for you. I will see you again in two weeks. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, reach out, leave a comment. A like you can see me also I have Instagram accounts um, I am a stitch nerd for all things cross stitch I'm a quilt nerd for all things quilting and I have an email address of I am a stitch nerd at gmail.com and I will see y'all in two weeks